John sent me this wiring diagram and asked me if I'd make a video and explain how this circuit functions. Basically it's an RF amplifier. The signal source about in the middle of the diagram that would be an RF source there driving the grid and the tube would amplify the signal and go through the capacitor and out to the RF output. This is the circuit that I came up with. Basically it's the same thing. I'm using an aught one a so there's no cathode. But the RF signal still comes in through C1 onto the grid of the tube. The tube amplifies it and it goes out on the plate and over and through C2 to the RF output. The RF choke that I'm using is an AM stick antenna and I added R1 which is a 500 ohm load resistor. This drawing shows where the RF is after it comes out of the ot one a Of course it's all the way at the RF output but notice that it's down at the top of the RF choke and the frequency of this is high enough that the energy, the RF energy, cannot pass through L1. This is another way to look at the RF as it travels through C2 to the RF output. Okay, here's the circuit I came up with. I'm using an aught one a This is the generator input here. The input capacitor C1. And right here are the filament connections. And also the B- minus connection is on this lead also. There's the load resistor and here I'm using an, an AM antenna stick as a RF choke and that's connected to the top here and there's C2 the output and that output goes over to the scope here. This is the input here. I'm going to hook that to the scope lead here. I can see that it's quite a bit less. So the tube is definitely ampl amplifying that signal. There we go. I also have a voltmeter here. This is the plate of the Ot one a on the left side of uh, C2 and this is on the other side of C2 which that will eventually go down to zero volts. Okay, here's the bottom of the coil, same as the plate, and here's the bottom of the load resistor, and here's the grid. That'll come down a little bit more eventually, but you can see that it does amplify quite well. Here's a look at the diagram with the voltages that we just measured. At the grid, that's a minus dot seven five volts DC. 
and at the plate we've got 128.1 and then on the other side of the capacitor we have zero because the capacitor is blocking the DC from the plate but allowing the RF to pass through and below L1 it's also 128.1 and below R1 is the 132.8 volts. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to short out that RF coil and we'll see what happens here. Right now we've got a nice output signal. So let's see here. Get another alligator clip and we'll go on this side of the cap and right here on this side of the resistor and our RF has almost disappeared. I'll temporarily lift the one off the bottom. There we go. Put that back. But what's interesting about this is that I'm going to go up here to the plate and it's the same DC voltage. So shorting out the RF choke in this circuit really doesn't change the voltage that much. But what has taken place is rather than the RF going through C2 it has now found a much easier path right down here into the power supply. Okay, I'm going to take this off. Okay, so the RF choke keeps the RF from entering the power supply and lets it travel through C2. To figure out the current that the ot one a is handling, we can do that by looking at R1. We've got the voltage above R1 and below R1. And if we subtract that, we've got a voltage drop of 4.7. And using Ohm's law, we take 4.7, divide that by 500, and the tube is handling dot zero zero nine four amps. Now it's just slightly more than that because of the grid current but it's really not significant at all. So for all practical purposes the tube current is dot zero zero nine four.